I'm Lisa Curcio and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday, December 13th and the year is 2021. This is a YouTube live streaming event. If this is your first time with me, I would love to welcome you. And for those of you returning, so glad that you are here with me tonight. Well, we are getting really close to Christmas. We are 12 days away. And regardless of whether you're finished with your Christmas cards or not tonight, I have four really quick cards for you that are gonna inspire you. And you can use these card sketch ideas all year long. Now, I have a very extensive project sheet for you that I'm gonna be sharing. I'm gonna demonstrate all four cards with you tonight. So it's gonna be a juggling act here in the studio, getting products in and out to share them all but I'm excited to do so. Now that project sheet is not only gonna hold pictures of all the four cards I'm gonna share with you tonight, but it's 13 pages long because it's gonna comprise all the supplies, the cutting dimensions, and the card sketches for the cards that I'm sharing with you. So you can recreate this with whatever you've got at home. Don't focus necessarily on the stamp set. Think about what you have to bang out those beautiful quick cards. And I'm gonna show you tonight that quick cards don't have to be boring. Wait until you see the ideas I have to share with you. Now, a couple other things before we get started. We love to interact with you, whether it's watching the replay or you are here for the live chat. But in order to do so, you're going to need to log into your YouTube account. That is a requirement of YouTube and not of me. So I hope you'll do that. I come back and I read every single comment. And then finally, I just want to take a minute to introduce you to Gina Curcio Holly. You'll see Gina's name here in blue off to the side with the live chat. She is moderating here for the live stream because there's no way for me to keep up with your comments. She's here to answer your questions and provide you with links. Now, for those of you with the live stream, just one little tidbit about that project sheet. It will be available when the live stream is over and all of you will be able to access it down in the video description below. There you can download it to your computer, you can print it, or of course you can save it. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, here at the stamp table tonight is super simple card, so I don't even need the trimmer, which is really, really unusual. I am starting with a card base of four and a quarter by 11. I did score all my cards in half before you join me, just to save a little bit of time. I am grabbing my bone folder so I can do a real nice crisp crease on here, and we are going to build from here. Now, the very first thing I decided to do was bring in a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock. Now, one of the most amazing things about Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. So the ink pads are going to match the markers that match our ink pads, the cardstock, designer paper, and so on. So there's no mishmash of shades. I love that. So on this, because I knew I wanted to keep my cards simple, I used this beautiful embossing folder. And this comes from the Wintry 3D embossing folder, and it's a duo. So you actually get a two for one, and I love that. So there's one here with the pine, and there's one here with the snowflakes. And I opted for this one tonight. So all I did is I went ahead and I stuck my cardstock inside of here, and you're gonna see I sized it just right. These are a little bit narrower. And I ran it through my stamp and cut and emboss machine. Now I wanna call your attention to something. This folder is thicker than your typical embossing folder, and I love these because they leave beautiful, deep impressions. And when they come out, they come out looking like this. Now this is dark paper, so I'm kind of hoping you're gonna be able to see this. Let's see if I can turn it a little bit so you can kind of see it. I'm kind of thinking maybe you can get a little bit. It is stunning. Now this in itself is fantastic, but I decided it probably need a little bit of oomph because it's a holiday card. Now this you can change to anything. I'm using silver foil here, but you can use designer series paper or a coordinating cardstock. So think about what you've got at home and we're gleaming insight tonight, inspiration from the layouts. Now I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet because adhesive liquid glue and hot glue will not stick to this, which means it's gonna keep my work surface sticky free, which is always really important because I get excited with adhesive. We are gonna put these together. I'm gonna to push that off to the side because of the glare. Now, sometimes with these 3D deep embossing folders, because of all the nooks and crevices and the paper's been conditioned, adhesive sometimes can be troublesome. So my Stampin' Seal Plus is really, really strong, and I'm gonna go slow because I don't wanna rip that paper. So embossed cardstock, if you're struggling with whatever adhesive you're using, I want you to take into consideration that you can use liquid glue for that, and that's gonna work well. 
Uh, here's a little Lisa thing. I think I've told you this before. I'm not a fan of liquid glue because I'm used too much. I'm a little bit messy, although I am going to use it tonight. The other thing I like to do is I like to make sure that when I'm using foils that I can use my adhesive because if it oozes out a little bit, you're going to have that marring from the glue actually on the foil. And since I don't do too many things straight, I'm going to turn this so that it's horizontally. That's going to allow me a little bit more success of giving this pretty even. And I'm looking to kind of leave a margin at what's going to be the top and the bottom. And just when I'm happy with it, I'm just going to tack that down in place. Now I like to rub from the back so I don't deboss the image. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this upside down. And then with my adhesive, we're going to add a little bit more here to those corners and the edges, just so this will stay nice and stuck to the base of the card. All right, and then this now is gonna go here. Remember I told you these are gonna be quick and simple, beautiful holiday cards. Looking here to keep that border. And I wanna make sure I get near the top as much as I can, and then we'll press that in place. Again, I'm gonna rub from the back just to make sure that these are good and stuck. Now, I wanted to keep this simple, but I wanted a focal point to this. So this is when I brought in these beautiful iridescent snowflakes, and these came from a package of 24. I am going to be honest with you, if you're falling in love with some of these products, hang tight because it's the holidays and things are selling out very, very quickly. So whether these are available or not, I don't want you to get too hung up on those. You'll be able to find them in my online store along with the rest of these products. But keep in mind, anything can go on the card. So maybe it's a poinsettia, maybe it's a gift bag, maybe it's a bow, whatever it is, you're going to use that. Now I'm gonna run over to a glue dot here. And what I like to do with glue dots is I like to actually take my item and press it on the glue dot and then lift. That's gonna make sure I don't have to touch it because you know they're really, really sticky. And instead of gravitating to the center, let's create a little visual interest and let's move up to the third portion top of the card. And then I'm just gonna tack that in place. Now obviously that's not completely tacked down but that's going to be okay because ahead of time, I went ahead and I stamped a greeting on just a scrap strip of cardstock. Now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to grab my full size dimensionals and I am a big fan of making sure these are well balanced, especially because I know the vast majority of my holiday cards are going to get mailed. And you know, they go through a mail meter at the post office that has rollers in it. And that has a tendency to kind of make your cards a little lopsided and that's just how it goes. And I just want to make sure that these are balanced well for that meter. This take your pick tool is one of my very favorite things. It's got a putty tip here to lift up those small pieces of cardstock or sequence. And that little paper piercing tool attachment helps me to remove those paper backings. This I decided to go right across the center of my snowflake and I am aligning these sides to the outside of the foil. Now I thought a Christmas card could use a little bit of bling. So I've got some rhinestones here and that's gonna play up that silver foil just beautifully. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna take one of those medium sizes and I'm gonna add that here. And keep in mind, these already have glue dots on the back of them, which make them really, really easy to use. Let's take one other one and I'm gonna bring that up here. I wanna give a little tip to you about when you're using your embellishments. Try to work in a triangle formation. It's more appeasing to the eye very, very simple. And here's where that color coordination comes into play. Same color ink, same color cardstock. You absolutely gotta love that. So this is the first quick and easy card you can make in five minutes. And there is going to be a card sketch for this in that free project sheet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and push that off to the side. And now we're gonna move on to our next one. So for this one, we're gonna start with a small square of white cardstock, and I'm gonna do some stamping on this one. And I'm gonna bring in the Memento black ink pad for this, and I'm bringing out an image from the classic cloche stamp set. Now keep in mind, some of these may not be in stock now because these products are being retired, but you can use anything in the square, okay? I'm gonna ink this up in the Memento ink, and I'm gonna stamp that right here near the top. I'm gonna to leave some room at the bottom. This outline image as it is, is fantastic to use because you can actually color it in with your Stampin' Blends markers, your Stampin' Write dye base markers, watercolor pencils, whatever you choose. Keep in mind if you're watercoloring, you are not gonna to wanna to use a water-based ink pad, otherwise you're gonna have just a muddy mess. You're gonna to wanna to use Stazon ink so that it's 
going to be, you know, not bleeding. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the Smoky Slate ink pad because I'm going to go again really, really simple for this. And this time I am going to bring in a coordinating image from that same stamp set. Now, there's a lot of stamp sets that we have in the catalog where they're two-step, which means one image fills the other, which makes this super quick because there's no coloring required, and of course, unless you want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over this and I'm going to do my very best not to get my head in your camera view. But when you get to be my age, you got to get close, right? And then we are going to stamp. Look what happens. It creates a scene for you on the back. Isn't that just beautiful? But we're going to take this a step further. I'm going to bring in a piece of scratch paper here. There is actually an additional image to the stamp set, like many of the Stampin' Up! stamp sets that steps it up a third time. And you only need one color ink pad because one color will produce several shades. And that's a great saving tip for you when you're shopping for your ink pad colors. So I'm gonna ink this up, but instead of using it full strength like we did here, I am going to stamp off one of the layers of colors. And this now is gonna get stamped right inside of here. And look, we've got some light gray shading inside of those houses, really, really pretty to create some density. All right, so that part is done. Let's move over now to the silicone craft sheet and let's add the layers that I have here. So I have some basic gray cardstock here and I did this on purpose. When you're looking to create quick and simple cards, I want you to consider very um, monochromatic, which means one color. Keep it simple and they'll be strikingly stunning because there's not a whole lot going on and it didn't take you a whole lot, long time to put them together. So I'm just gonna do an extra piece of layer here with the smoky slate. So this is gonna bring now some continuity to the front of the card with our images. Now let's go ahead and let's skip over now to the actual layer on my card. I'm gonna put that off to the side. This is four by five and a quarter. Again, all of the cutting dimensions are inside that free project sheet that's 13 pages long for you. But I decided I wanted something here because my focal point's gonna be rather simple. So I grabbed some scraps of my designer series paper. So I've got those here. Now this designer series paper is already sold out. I know, boo hiss, but use what you have. And it's a great way to use up your scraps. Now the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over to what's gonna be my wrong side. And I'm gonna add a little adhesive here and a little adhesive here. I am not concerned about the center and I'll explain why when we get to the focal point. Again, you'll remember me telling you, I don't do too many things straight. So the easiest way to do this is to turn this horizontally. This grid paper comes in a pad. It is sold in my online store. I love it because I can line up my cardstock on here to give me a decent visual of which way I gotta go. I want this in the middle. And you know what? I told you I can't do too many things straight. So I am looking at this graphic line that goes underneath here to here, and I'm using that as a guide. And I'm just doing my very best to try to make it straight. Once it looks like it's in the center, I am not gonna push really hard, but I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna say, well, can I live with that? Is that pretty straight? That's pretty straight. So now I'm gonna come over to this other piece, and we're gonna use the adhesive in the same manner as we did before. We are going to keep this horizontally, and this one is shorter. And again, those cutting dimensions are inside your project sheet. And I'm gonna lightly turn this one here, and I'm gonna look. Okay, I can live with that. And then I'm gonna take this last one, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. These staggered panels is a fantastic laid out idea for you because you can use up all your scrap papers at home. Now the space between here and here, I'm doing my best to mimic and then we're gonna tack those in place. And I'm gonna give that one cursory look. That looks pretty good. We're gonna push that down. I am gonna take this now and we're gonna add some adhesive to the back side. Now these are cards that are intended for you to make very, very quickly. And I don't know, but a lot of people think that simple cards are not pretty, but I'm here to tell you that they are. And here is a smoky slate cardstock base. Remember the color coordination, you absolutely have to love that. I did score it in half before you joined me. I'm gonna use that bone folder for that nice crisp edge, and this is going to go here. And I just thought to myself, boy, did I not put those patterns in the same direction? That would have been embarrassing, but good, I did. So keep that in mind. If you're using a pattern, make sure these are going the right way. Now this is going to get added, and we're gonna add one more thing to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and use those dimensionals. Let's do one in each of those four corners. 
We're going to keep with that same theory. I'm even going to go with one in the center. Because remember, your card is going to go through the rollers at the mail meter. So you want to make sure that it's going to hold up really well when it gets to the other end. This now is going to go here in the center. So I'm going to look for space here at the top and the bottom. Just try to equal margin it and stick that here. Now I did stamp this ahead of time just to save a little bit of time, but you can see where it's going to go. Now for this, my full size dimensionals are going to be a little bit too big. So I'm going to come over to my mini dimensionals. And I love these because they are already pre-cut and ready to go. They fit perfectly on these smaller pieces. I can separate them for some stability, except for when you take the paper off before you take the dimensional. <laughs> All right. And then what we're going to do is remove those backings as well so that we'll have the other sticky side revealed. And then this now is going to go here. This is going to give us a nice, simple focal point and a really pretty, simple card. Isn't that sharp? I love this card. Very simple color palette, but striking and wintry. And keep in mind, you can change this greeting and change up your focal point for any theme. All right, let's move on to our next one. All right, our next card, we're going to change things up just a little bit. I'm going to start with the background on this one, and this is Crumb Cake Cardstock. And this time, I want to teach you how you can make a tone-on-tone -tone background with the exact same color ink pad. Remember, we have talked about the color coordination that is so outstanding with Stampin' Up! They have won award after award for this. So we are going to use the ink pad to create a subtle background. But perhaps you're thinking, well, I don't have the embossing folder, or I don't have the designer series paper. That's okay. Watch this tip. We're going to open this up and we're going to get this ready. I am grabbing the pine piece, the pine needles here from one stamp set. This is all the same stamp set that I'm going to use on the rest of the pieces of this card. Do not think that you have to pull out six stamp sets to make one card. You do not. Now there's a couple things you can do. Remember we talked about in the previous card how one ink pad can make several shades of the same color. And I love this to help save you money because there's no reason to buy ink pads that are closely related in shades. The pigmentation in the Stampin' Up! pads is beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gravitate to this one. So I'm going to stamp off one layer of ink here and then I'm going to stamp here. And I'm going to repeat and do this randomly on the cardstock. This is even something that kids can help you with because you know what? It doesn't matter what direction it's going in because in essence what we are doing right now is we are creating our own designer series paper backgrounds just by mishmashing a single image on the card base to actually create a subtle and stunning background that will coordinate with the front. All right, and then once you've got it filled to your liking, you're good to go. The intention is for it to be light, so please keep that in mind. All right, we're going to take this and we're going to put that off to the side. And now I'm going to grab some squares that I cut. Now, if you have dies, you can do those with your dies or a punch. Either one is going to work. But let's start with some fun focal points. Remember that scratch piece of paper? Well, I'm just going to flip that over so it's not too distracting. And I'm going to lay my squares on top of here. And this is where we're going to have some fun. From the exact same stamp set that I used this image from, I've pulled out the pine cones. Now for this, it's also a two-step stamp, which means one fits on top of the other. So let's go ahead and let's take the image of the pine cone, and I'm going to stamp that in the same color as the cardstock layer that we're going to use. And I want this to be kind of interesting, so I'm going to put my pine cone on an angle. Now with photopolymer, it's going to sometimes stick to the paper, and that's totally fine. But I love photopolymer because the stamp turns the color of the ink, which means you are able to see exactly where you're going, and you can even see if you've missed a spot inking it up. Now for this one, let's go ahead and put this guy right in the center so that they're each in a different position. Now I want to also give you a time-saving tip. How many times have you been doing a stamping marathon and whatever you're using to clean off your stamps, maybe it's a chamois, in my case it's a stamp and scrub, it gets really muddied. And after a while when you go to clean your stamps, they really don't look very clean because the water is so dirty. So take that excess ink and stamp it off on your scratch paper. Not necessarily very prevalent for these lighter colors, but when we get to darker colors, that is going to make a huge difference. You're going to release that pigmentation on the scrap. 
All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over to a darker shade. This is Early Espresso, so a very dark chocolatey brown. And I'm bringing out the two-step or the outline image to this pine cone. We are gonna ink this up. Whenever you are using a dark color at home, I want you to test it. I want you to go like this on your scratch paper and you determine the intensity of the color you wanna use so you can decide whether or not you wanna stamp off or not. I want that really intense brown. So I'm gonna go with that early espresso straight up and down. Again, try not to put my head in your camera view. So we've got one here. And I'm gonna move this one up so I can see it a little bit better. And let's put this one here. And then we've got one more. Now I'm talking my way through this, so this would take you a whole lot less time. You see all the ink I'm getting off? That's not gonna end up on my Stampin' Scrub, which means I don't have to step away from all the fun to go rinse that out when it gets really yucky. That is gonna save you so much time. Now one more color, this is Soft Succulent. And again, you can use any green that you want. But do you remember this image? The one we used here for the background? We're gonna bring it all together. Again, just like we've done before, I want you to take those darker colors and I want you to determine which shade you like best. But you know what? I got an idea for this one. Let's create some more intensity. So we're gonna start here and I'm gonna add one here and I'm not gonna re-ink it, but there's only partial ink on partial of the stamp. So this area here is darker than here. So that I don't miss and have a half dark, half light I'm going to be careful to ink it up and stamp off so that it all has the same intensity. And then what I'm going to do is create two tones on that little square. This time, I'm going to kind of work outside the edges, and I'm going to make this one even lighter. And then this last square over here, let's go ahead and let's make these both dark. Now I want a little bit light in the background, so I'm going to come up around there like so. Now let me just clean off that stamp. Let's move this out of the way. There's no more stamping needed. And let's go ahead and take a look at our panels. Aren't these pretty? And I love the fact that they're going in different directions. But I wanted to play up those colors, so I brought in a little bit darker cardstock. Now this is Evening Evergreen. It's all gonna come together in just a moment. So I'm gonna flip these over, and I am gonna add a little adhesive to the back of one. And I'm gonna do the same on this one. This is just called speed adhering, right? <laughs> and then I'm gonna take the same here. And then what I'm gonna do is take my little squares and these are slightly bigger. And again, these cutting dimensions are all included for you so you don't have to guess. But keep in mind, use what you've got at home. If you've got punches and dies, use those to crank out your quick pretty cards. All right, we are ready to assemble. And this one, we're gonna step up just a little bit. All right, remember this layer? Well, I decided to pull out a scrap piece of designer series paper that I had. Really, really pretty, double-sided, but I wanna use my pine cones. If you don't have designer series paper, don't sweat it, you can leave it blank. But for tonight, I'm just using up my scraps to get all my cards created, and I'm gonna place this here on the side. Again, I don't do anything straight, so I'm gonna turn this to make it easy for my hand. This is gonna come all the way to the edge, as well as the top, and we're gonna press that in place. The next thing I wanna do before I go too far is I wanna add some ribbon. Do you see how the colors are all starting to come together? This was from my scrap bin. I had actually cut it for something else that I didn't need. So I thought, oh, I might as well use it, right? So I'm gonna come along the back and I am going to shimmy this ribbon to where I think it's going to need to be for me to tie a bow. Well, here comes that dreaded word, a bow, right? Now, oftentimes, a lot of you have trouble here with this sliding. So let me give you another tip. Keeping it in place, I'm gonna add a little adhesive there, and I'm gonna tack that down. That is just kind of the best thing in the world because now I don't have to chase it if it decides it wants to slide. Now, let's talk about a bow because I get tons of comments about this. I'm gonna give you a hack that involves this that will make you so much happier. You're gonna start by making the tie. Keeping the tension for us while we make the bow is usually the most challenging part. Now, if you're having difficulty, I want you to take yourself a glue dot, and depending on the width of your ribbon, you may need two to make this wider. You are gonna crumble this together and make it into a little ball. It's very sticky, so don't worry. I'm gonna hold this on where I want my bow to fall, and I am gonna add a glue dot right there very much like we did with the back, 
this now is going to hold the tension of the knot so that you're not fighting all the loose ends. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up like this. I'm going to come up and around. And you know the bow never lays the way you want it, does it? And I can tell. If I pull it this way, my bow is going to be upside down. So instead of going over, I am going to go under. And I am going to push it through here. Experiment. Oh, of course, you're watching me, right? Experiment. If it doesn't land the way you want, untie it and put it back together. And we're going to pull this very, very tight. When you do, you're going to have uneven loops, short ends. It's going to look lousy. Okay, here's another tip. Either push or pinch the center knot. And then you're going to take that outside raw end and you are going to pull. And that's going to size up the loops the way that you want them. And then give this one more cursory pull so that it's nice and tight. And then you can resize and you don't lose your tension. Now I'm going to grab my scissors. And I'm going to give this a little bit of a haircut here and a haircut here so that that looks a little prettier. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start to bring this card together. Now I'm going to flip this over and we're going to add some adhesive. I'm coming right across that ribbon. If you've got a good strong adhesive like my Stampin' Seal Plus, you have nothing to worry about. That's just going to keep it anchored down. We are going to come over to the base cardstock. Do you see the continuity of this card coming together? This is scored. We are going to fold it. I'm going to go over that with my bone folder so it's nice and flat. And this piece now is going to go right here in the center and I'm going to leave a margin. Now, as much as I loved this, and I'm going to add these, I thought it still needed something besides my panels. But let's go ahead and let's add those first. And as I've talked to you before, balancing these I think is really important. You know, they're pre-cut, they're ready to go. I'm not afraid to put one in every corner, especially if I know I'm gonna mail my card. So I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that on each of these corners. That take your pick tool that I've already used, it's gonna make this lickety split to get these off. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna remove those paper backings and I'm actually gonna remove them all because guess what? They won't stick to my silicone craft sheet. So I can lay them there and I can ready them to determine what order I want to place these in. So that's going to make my life a whole lot easier. Let's get this one it just wants to be persnickety on me and I'm going to pull these off as well. All right. So now I've got my little pieces and I'm looking and I'm going to take this one. And I think, OK, I'm going to put this one right about here and I'm going to take this one and then I have this one. I can decide where I want them. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to go this way. And then let's go ahead and take this one. You see, they're not going to fit. So we're going to shimmy these just a little bit. I didn't press them hard on purpose because I want to make sure that I have room here. All right, if you've done what I've done, let me show you how to fix it. This tool is worth its weight in gold. It got really sticky. This little spatula end, can you see how much I've used it? Yeah, for good reason. Because if it sticks, I can come up underneath here. I'm very carefully just getting underneath the dimensional. I am not ruining my cardstock. Do you see how there's a dimensional here? I'm going to pick this up. None of us is perfect. You know, crafting is just that. It's called crafting for a reason. I wanted to make sure that there was ample room here. And there wasn't going to be. So we're going to fix this. So let's shimmy this one up. And let's move this one in the center. I make a ton of mistakes. You should see my trash can. All right, this needed something. So I decided I needed a little tiny tag. So I brought in just a sliver of cardstock. And I wanna show you a punch that you may not have seen me use before. This is the Lovely Labels Punch. And because I have many punches that make labels, I actually label them on the back to make it easy for me. Here, it indicates what width of the label it can be. So I can do a half inch, a three quarter inch, or a one inch. I did this with a Sharpie marker. It's a great tip for you at home. I'm gonna lay this on my work surface. That's the best way to use these. And do you see the lines here? So there's one, two, and three. So half, three quarter, one inch. So you can determine the depth. The best thing is you can also determine from this which topper you prefer the best. So just for grins, let's go ahead and use this one. You're going to want a nice long strip of paper because it's going to have to travel all the way to the back of the punch. Once you get it to the back of the punch, you're going to align it within the appropriate track and then you're going to punch and you're going to get yourself your label. Really, really pretty. Now I did do that ahead of time and I stamped a little tiny greeting on it from another stamp set and we are not going to fuss over this. We're going to turn this upside down. 
we're going to grab a dimensional. We're going to take off that paper backing. Let's switch that tool around one more time. This is the best $10 you'll spend in my online store. And then watch what we're going to do. We're going to make it look like we fussed. And we're going to stick that right underneath there like so. We're going to tighten everything up and we have our card. Nice and simple, but very stunning. And I've showed you some very simple stamping, stamping tricks on how to use your images. Now this last one, mm, it might be my favorite because it incorporates a technique that's quick and simple. All right, let's, let me pull out those supplies next. I am going to start with a piece of shimmery white cardstock. I wish you were here. The paper does have a shimmer to it. It glistens, it's beautiful, and it doesn't matter whether or not you color it, that shimmer will continue to come through. So for this one, we're gonna do some stamping. So I'm gonna go back to my Memento Black ink pad for this, and I've pulled out this beautiful angel image holding the dove. Now I know you're probably gonna be rushing to try to purchase it, the last I checked it is sold out, but you might want to check my online store. It is called Angels of Peace, and you can see if it is sold out, you know, for good reason. Absolutely stunning, but do check. So I'm going to leave that face up because it's large, and I'm going to take my Memento Black ink pad, and I'm going to ink it this way. I find if I do this way, I have less likelihood of missing a spot, making sure I provide ink everywhere that there is an image. Doing it this way, it's kind of like blind inking. Again, I'm turning it horizontally because I don't do anything straight, and then she's gonna go right here. I'm gonna take my time, and I'm gonna trace out that design because I wanna make sure that I get the whole thing out, okay? We're not done with this image. We are gonna do this one more time. You are gonna need to make sure that you re-ink it. So we're gonna re-ink this one. Make sure you've got good coverage. And then we're gonna stamp this on some designer series paper. Another absolutely great way for you to use up your scraps because you'll see in a minute, depending on what stamp you use, it doesn't require much of designer series paper at all. All right, we are all done. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna come back to here. Now I did color her hair and I did color the bird before you joined me so you didn't have to sit and watch but I wanna give you a little bit of a shading tip here for the wings. I am actually going to not color her dress, but I thought the wings, as beautiful as the shimmery paper is, and you can't pick it up on camera, it needed a little bit of shadowing. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring in my Smoky Slate Stampin' Blends markers, and this is the light of the two shades, because you get the light and the dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the chiseled shorter tip versus the broad tip. There's no right or wrong way. You can use whatever you want, but I like the chiseled one so I can control it. I am gonna just do a portion so that you can see what I did. I'm using that line to my advantage. And then I'm gonna come over here around the inside of this and I'm come around here and I'm just tracing it. Again, I'm only doing a small area. I have one that's done for you. This alcohol-based marker I just placed needs a few seconds for that alcohol to process and for the alcohol base to evaporate. Because then, to lighten it, we are gonna use this. This is called the color lifter. Just like the other marker, it has two ends, but it's going to lift the color and make it lighter, and I love that. So I'm gonna use the chisel tip for this one. I'm gonna come up over it, and it's not gonna look like anything is happening because that alcohol has to dissipate and it has to be allowed to evaporate for that shadowed effect to have to work. Now I'm gonna set that off to the side for just a minute and let's talk about this image. Now I'm grabbing my paper snips right here because these are my smaller scissors. These are sold in my online store, love them. This is what I want you to do. You are going to cut directly on that stamped line. Now you can leave a little bit about it because you can see that this one obviously has some um, bold lines on it. So it's not important you cut the whole thing off. You're gonna go around and around until you get the whole design cut off. Now, if you thought this was hard, it's not. I did one ahead of time. I didn't want you to have to sit and watch the whole thing. So it's just the dress. It's very simple. But here's what we're gonna do. Here's that colored image I told you that I made. So I colored this. This is what we call paper piecing, which means we're eliminating all the work of coloring a large area or a solid area to give it texture and added color that maybe a marker can't provide. 
So let's talk about adhering this. That's really important. You can see here with her arm and here at the bottom, we've got some detailed areas. Now, I don't like liquid glue, I already told you that, but sometimes it's necessary. So I'm gonna show you what I use. I use the Tombow Multipurpose Glue, which is in my online store. I love this because it stores the glue upside down. And you're gonna be able to find this little holder on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. It is not a Stampin' Up! product, but I link products there that I think you're gonna enjoy because I love them here in the studio. They just aid me in my paper crafting. This glue is fantastic, except for I have a problem when I get to these little tiny areas. So I'm gonna add a little bit of glue here, and I'm not gonna to work too close to the edge because remember I told you I'm kind of messy? The tip is kind of broad. So what I did is I took this a step further and I have this bottle ready in my studio. These precision applicator tip bottles are also in my craft room favorites. And I put this glue, unscrewed this, and stuck it down inside. Now it's a thick glue, so I like to get it started, but I wanna show you. Do you see here? Watch, look how tiny I can get those dots. Is this not fantastic? It's a game changer, which means I am not going to risk on those little tiny pointed areas that need to stick, right? That has to stick, otherwise we're gonna have a problem. That I'm gonna have a problem getting glue there that's gonna, not gonna ooze outside the lines. So I'm gonna pick this up and then I am literally going to dress her. So I am looking to mimic the exact same lines on the stamped image. It's so simple, you're not gonna have any trouble. You're gonna press that in place. And I'm gonna let that sit for one second. Let's talk about this. Wipe it off on your silicone craft sheet, and then all you're gonna do is you're gonna use the lid that comes with it. It's a little silicone tip, and it caps this needle. I have had this nine months. It has never dried out. This is a game changer. In my craft room favorites, you'll find these sold in a 10 pack. Trust me, you'll want them because you're gonna give them to stocking stuffers and birthday presents for all your crafting friends. This now is going to get layered and we're gonna finish up our card, but I have a couple other tips for you about the next layout that we're gonna put this card on. Alcohol markers will bleed through the cardstock, so always make sure you protect your work surface when you're coloring, and then I'm gonna attach that here. All right, let's move over now to the card base. Very much like the first one, we have four and a quarter by 11. This is beautiful, rich Razzleberry, scored in half already before you join me, and then I'm gonna go over it with my bone folder. This needed something, because it was just not enough pizzazz for me. So I pulled out a, an embossing folder that I love, and guess what, it is available. This is called Merry Melody, and I love the musical notes because I think it's gonna look fantastic on romantic cards for every occasion. Great for sympathy, get well, Valentine's Day, anniversaries, and of course, Christmas. So what I did ahead of time is I used that same shimmery white cardstock. Gosh, I wish you were here to put that on that cardstock, so I embossed it. But I thought, you know, this needs a little bit more. So I grabbed some scraps of designer series paper. Now this gorgeous paper is already sold out. Again, the whole point of tonight's live stream is to teach you to use the scraps you have at home for the layout, so this can be any card whatsoever. But you know what? I wanted to play that up a smidge, so I brought in a piece of gold foil. So let's, let me show you what we're gonna do. We are going to flip this upside down on the silicone craft sheet. And I'm gonna get my adhesive going here and I'm gonna add it in small strips. I find for me personally that that works better because I don't have a long sticky area that I'm going to work with. The silicone craft sheet is gonna be very, very important. Now you might be looking at this thinking, there's glue there. Because the silicone craft sheet will not allow glue, liquid glue and hot glue to stick, it can simply just rub right off. And as it dries, it turns opaque and it comes easily off. So this is a fantastic product. I am going to take this piece now and I'm working on an angle. Don't worry about making it all straight, just stick it on there. We are going to take the gold piece and we're gonna work this on an angle. Now the one thing about the card sketches I put for you in tonight's free project sheet is you're gonna have placement of all the elements that I've used but I want you to use some creative freedom here. This card does not have to go in this orientation, does it? 
it could certainly go landscape. It doesn't have to go portrait. Do you have to use three strips? No, you can use two. You can use one big long one. You're going to be able to create a lot of versatility with the ideas and the sketches that I'm providing you so that you can go ahead and make your own inspiration. Now, I cut them long on purpose because there's nothing worse than it falling short. So I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to give this a little cursory rub from the back. And here in the studio, I keep a pair of scissors that have ribbon on them. And everybody knows this is for the sticky jobs because nobody wants to gunk up the good ones, right? So I'm going to use this cardstock base as a guide and I am going to cut away the excess. This way, if I get adhesive on these, I can go ahead and use my Goo Gone. It's also in my craft room favorites. Best things for your scissors to take that sticky away. You know why? It's citrus based, which means all the alcohol that you try to put on your scissors will not rust out that rivet in your scissors. You should not be using that on a regular basis. So the citrus in the Goo Gone is fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and let's move this. And then what we're gonna do is make a little room here. And we are going to add this layer now to the card, but I have one more tip for you. Now on an image that's large like this, you may be wondering, well, where am I gonna put the greeting? How is this going to work? All right, well, let me show you. I'm gonna add this layer first. There's my sticky spot. And we're gonna look for that frame on that card base here. Here's our angel, beautiful as it is. And of course you could always put the greeting on the inside. But what about this? This is from the stamp set. It's bigger than I wanted. No problem. Let me show you what I did. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to grab my dimensionals. I want to make sure that they're going to gravitate towards the top of my greeting. The shape of these dimensionals is going to work to your advantage every single time. So I'm going to align up that straight edge here. I am going to remove the paper backings. Of course, there's always one that doesn't want to come off, right? <laughs> And then what I am going to do now is I am going to gravitate this in a place where I can allow just the greeting that I want to use to show. We're going to levitate this with more dimensionals. That was a fancy way of saying I'm going to put it up higher. I'm going to levitate this. I am not going to focus my dimensional in the center because we are going to piece the greeting together to show only what we want. All right, so we're going to add this here to the center of the card base. Do you see how the angle on this card really plays up the movement of this angel? So pretty. This now has nothing on the bottom. Remember, the placement is here at the top. This is going to slide underneath, and I only want the words, peace on earth. You can go high, you can go low, it's up to you. I'm going to do this one slightly different than the one in your project sheet, and I'm going to place that there. Simple and stunning. Literally five minutes, you have an absolutely gorgeous card. Obviously, this could say with sympathy or thinking of you. This could be any card whatsoever. In fact, all of these could easily be any card whatsoever. Change out the images, use up your scraps, and you're going to find you're going to create gorgeous cards. Do me a favor. Tell me which one is your favorite. Which layout do you like the best? Which one do you think you're going to get the most use out of? I'll guarantee you, you're gonna use them all because they're incredibly versatile. Now, before you go, I got a couple things really important I wanna share with you. One of them is a schedule. Really important if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon in the word all so you'll get notifications. And you're gonna know why in just a second. But if you're new here, head over to lisasstampstudio.com, scroll down about halfway, you're gonna get a pop-up. And it's going to invite you to my free weekly e-newsletter. And you're going to want to join because I provide a free project in a PDF tutorial format for you free every Thursday. Just sign up. I would love to include you. Go straight to your inbox. No frills. Would love to have you there. When you go to my website, check out my classes tab. I have a huge PDF tutorial library there for you where you can download the project sheets and enjoy all the projects you see there. And I'm grabbing this. For those of you that don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would love to receive these brand new publications that are coming out on January 4th, you can request them on my website under catalog. Now, you might be wondering about the schedule change and here we go. Christmas is next week and in order to give me time to spend some time with my family, there will not be a live next Monday, which is December 20th. I know, 
but okay, but guess what? I'm coming back live with you the following Monday, which is December 27th at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, right here, same thing. And guess what we're using? Brand new products. And I have something fabulous to share with you. I've been working on it really, really hard, and I cannot wait for you to be here with me. So it's important you subscribe and click the bell and the word all so that you don't miss those reminders because we're all busy right now. Friends, thank you so much for being my customers, for being viewers. I absolutely adore every single one of you and very grateful that you allow me to share what I love with you. I wish you and your families a beautiful Christmas season and a new year filled of health and happiness. Gina, thanks for all your hard work moderating tonight. And I'll see you all back with me in two weeks from today, right here with brand new projects and brand new catalog product. Good night, everyone.